So we're now going to talk about case study EX4 and cover the second half of this. And this will also illustrate a bunch of key operators in Rx Java. And these, this particular example is going to show a bunch of cool things. It's going to show how you can combine the Java Streams framework with the Rx Java framework. And in particular, we're going to use a bunch of Rx Java single operators like flat map, flat map completable, and so on and so forth to create, reduce, multiply, and display big fraction objects asynchronously. So ironically enough, there actually are, I don't believe any observables here, but we're going to use singles in conjunction with Java streams to show you how you can mix and match these frameworks together. And this is in the EX4 project in reactive observable folder in my live lessons GitHub repository. OK, so let's go ahead and switch over to the code. So once again, we're back in project EX4 in my observables uh, folder. And you can see here that the main entry point registers two methods under test. We talked about test fraction multiplications blocking subscriber in the previous lesson. And now we're going to talk about test fraction multiplications stream. As always, both of those methods, or their method references rather, are registered with the async task barrier. All the tasks are run, and then the main thread blocks waiting for them to complete. So let's go ahead and take a look at this code. This code appears about halfway down, or two-thirds of the way down, in the observable ex.java file. And you can see here it's the test fraction multiplication streams method. So we make a new string buffer, and then we are going to do some really funky stuff. We're going to start by using the Java stream frameworks generate method, not an observable or flowable or Rx Java factory method. We use the stream generate method to make a bunch of big fractions that are random and unreduced. We're going to use the Java streams limit method to stop after S max fraction big fractions have been generated randomly. And then we're going to use the Java streams map method. And here's where things get very interesting. So we're going to use map in order to call a method called reduce and multiply fractions. And when we take a look at that method in just a second, you'll see what it does is it's actually going to use Rx Java features. And it's, in fact, going to return an Rx Java single. And let me just back up here to show you what's going to happen next. So what comes out of map is a, is a Java stream of Rx Java single objects. So now we're mixing the two frameworks together. And then we're going to use the Java streams collect method to collect all those singles into a single single, into one single, which will then go ahead and wait for all the asynchronous computation to finish. When it's all done, that single single will trigger. And then the flat map completable method, which is a single method, will be called back to sort and print the results. So you can see here, it's really quite interesting. We're, we're using Java streams for generate, limit, map, and collect. We're creating a Java stream of Rx Java singles. We're collecting them using a Java streams collector, which returns a single. And then we're finishing things off with single flat map completable. So it's a really cool example of how these frameworks work together quite nicely. Um, <laughs> and uh, the other thing I will point out is that the parallel processing that's happening here is taking place in the Rx Java scheduler's computation thread pool. So the Java streams framework and its conventional use of the, the common fork join pool is not being applied in this case at all. So let's take a quick look at reduce and multiply fraction. It takes an unreduced big fraction, the computation scheduler, and our string buffer. And you can see what it does is it emits a value here, which is the reduced big fraction. That's going to run on the scheduler. So this reduction will take place in the context of the scheduler in the computation pool. And then the last thing we do here is we return a single to a multiplied big fraction. So we're going to take the reduced fraction and multiply it also using the scheduler that was passed in. And that will then return a single. And here's what multiply fraction looks like. You can see what multiply fraction does is it goes ahead and it multiplies the fraction in the background in the context of that scheduler. So 
but all this stuff takes place in a pool of threads, which is kind of cool. And you'll also notice how you can use the scheduler on single just as conveniently as you use the scheduler on an observable or a flowable. So schedulers are orthogonal to the types of react the reactive types that RxJava provides. So that's what's going on there. All those things take place in the background. And then the last couple things I'll look at is here's the, the collector that's used to take a stream of singles, store it in a list of singles, and then return a single to a list of items of type T. And let's take a quick look at how this works. It's really neat. We have an array list is used for the mutable result container. We just keep adding things to it as we need to. We can combine things. We don't actually use parallel streams here, so this is not relevant, but we still have to provide it. Here's the method I want to focus on, the finisher. This finisher uses RxJava single features in order to wait for a bunch of asynchronous singles to complete. And it's really cool to see how it works. So the way it works is there's a method on single called zip array, which I think is a funny name, but basically what you're doing is you're giving it an array of singles, and that's, of course, what's coming out of the, um, that's the mutable result container that, the, that the, this thing is holding. It's an array of singles. And we're gonna give that array of singles, um, or actually, it's actually a list that we turn into an array. And then we go ahead and pass in a combiner. And the combiner is going to work as follows. So here is the combiner. The combiner is going to take a function, an RxJava function, which will have an array of objects, and it's going to return a list of objects of type T. And here's how it does it. It says, and it's going to use Java streams mechanisms, of course, because we're mixing and matching our frameworks uh, seamlessly. So it says, take this array, which is what was passed in down here in the zip array second parameter, and turn it into a stream. Then use the map operation to convert each of the objects in the stream, because this is an object array, to elements of type T. So now we have a stream of elements of type T. And then collect those elements of type T into a list. So we end up with a list of elements of type T, and that's what gets returned. So a single, you can see here, a single to a list of elements of type T are what's returned from finisher. And that means, of course, that the, the uh, call back here for collect will end up getting a single single that will trigger when all the other, um, when everything else completes. And the last couple things are just the, the factor method that makes the new singles collector and characteristics, which just says we don't care about the ordering. So super cool example that demonstrates how you can kind of mix and match streams and you can mix and match RxJava. If we run this code, you can see, oh, sorry, one more thing, forgot the, la the last piece. The last piece of the puzzle here is we take this list, which is not sorted, and we call sort and print list. And sort and print list is actually using a pattern we've seen a number of times before. We talked about this in the context of Java Completable Futures, for example, where we're going to go ahead and quick sort the list in the computation scheduler. We're also going to heap sort the list in the computation scheduler. So we're heap sorting and quick sorting in parallel. And then what we do is we use the rather strangely named method on single called AMB array. AMB stands for ambiguous because we don't know which one will finish. It'll, it's ambiguous which one will finish first. I think that's a really strange name, but that's what they call it. So we say quick sort and heap sort, whichever one of these things finishes first, take that result, display the list, and then say to the abstract, to the uh, async task bearer, word on. And that's what comes out of this particular piece of code. So we do this in parallel using a technique that we've applied other places. Okay, let's go back and look at the results from this. As you can see, we generated a bunch of these values using the generate method. I think there are probably 10 of them, if I'm not mistaken. And it went through and did the reductions and the multiplications and so on. And here's what we end up with when all is said and done. And you'll notice if you look carefully that they are in fact sorted. We don't know whether quick sort worked faster or heap sort worked faster, but who cares? We just ran them both in parallel 
and took whichever result came back first. Okay, so that's the end of the second part of case study EX4.